Got another scan tool to look at today from ThinkCar. This is their ThinkScan 689BT for the Bluetooth version. Let's open it up and take a closer look. Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. This company Think Car reached out and asked me if I'd be willing to take a look at their ThinkScan 689BT. And I said, absolutely. So let's take a quick look at this. Let's open it up and see what comes included. And then we'll get this hooked up to a vehicle and kind of run through some basic diagnostics and see what we think. Comes in a nice little soft shell case here. Let's open this up. All right, so we do have our ethernet cable because this is capable of doing the DOIP or diagnostics over internet protocol. And let's take a look at what else we have here. We've got a quick start manual, product overview, technical specifications, how to use functions, descriptions, and Q and A. All right, we'll set that aside for right now, but I might have to refer back to it. There's also a little packing list, let you know what comes inside. Protective foam cover here. Let's go ahead and peel off this protector here. Well, there it is. It's a nice little compact unit, a nice wide display. And if you see on the back here, we've got the dongle to connect and it's got a little magnetic connector there. It's a pretty strong magnet too. So that's pretty cool. And it looks like we've also got a pretty nice kickstand. So you can set that up. You can also use that to uh, set this up on a steering wheel. And it looks like we just have a power button, USB-A and USB-C. Set that aside for a minute here and see what else comes included. Now here's our adapter that we would need to use for the DOIP or the diagnostics over internet protocols. It's got your little ethernet adapter here in addition. So you would just plug this into your OBD port and plug in the little dongle there. And it comes with a nice little USB-A to USB-C cable. Well, let's go ahead and power the unit on and see what kind of battery we have. Hopefully there's not too much glare on the camera here. Well, that's pretty cool. They send this fully charged. I mean, we're at 96% and this is uh, already ready to use. But let's go ahead and set this up. Of course, we're gonna do English. Let's hit start. All right, now it gives you a little QR code so that you can scan that and get this connected to your Wi-Fi so that you can download any updates. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. We're just gonna use it how it comes. All right, well, it seems Seems pretty straightforward. We've got the VIN auto search. We can also do diagnose, quick access to the vehicle system for diagnostics by manually selecting your vehicle's brand, model year, engine type, and other information. Or you can go right into OBD, quickly read the fault codes related to the OBD system and clear them. View the diagnostic records and quickly access previously diagnosed vehicles. You can view the saved report as well and share that with a customer. Now, of course, if you have any issues or bugs with this, you can send some feedback as well. Let's hit the maintenance tab up here. So here we have quite a few things things that we can do. Uh, looks like air fuel ratio reset, ABS bleeding, add blue reset so you can take care of that def fluid on your diesel, uh, adaptive front lighting reset, air suspension matching, airbag reset, battery matching, brake pad reset, clutch matching, electronic water pump starting, DPF regeneration, that's your diesel particulate filter, ECU reset, EGR adaptation, electronic throttle adaptation, FRM matching, gateway module data calibration, gear learning, gearbox learning, anti-theft key matching. You can disable any lost keys and add new keys only for cars with easy immobilizer system. You can do injector coating and here's just kind of a grid so this tells us everything that we can do. There's quite a few things on here. You can do the uh, oil reset, odometer meter reset, rainfall, light sensor settings, seat calibration, steering angle reset, stop start settings, sunroof initialization, TPMS reset, transport mode, turbocharging matching, tire size adjustment, and windows calibration. That tire size adjustment, that's pretty neat. Now since we're not connected to a vehicle, it's probably not going to let us do anything, but that's pretty neat that it has that capability. You know, if you've got a lift and some bigger tires, it would be pretty cool if you can calibrate that or get your speedometer to, to be more accurate. Let's exit out of maintenance. Let's take a look at upgrade. Now here we've got vehicle diagnostic software. You can download any of the latest updates or anything. You can download and install the latest version of the maintenance software as well. So here we've got our settings. Let's go into the settings and we can add an email, hook up our Wi-Fi, update the software, online service. So of course, if you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you can get some real-time support. Here it has the user manual. So if you're the type of person that wants to read through the entire user manual, you can do that here. Fault code library, coverage list, module, gadget. Oh, gadget, I think you can hook up to uh, Google Chrome. Remote assistance, so you can get technical support through remote diagnostic tools. And then this button right here just displays everything all at once. All right, well, it seems pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Well, let's go plug this into my 2016 Ford Transit, and then we'll run through a few of these functions and features on here and see how it does. 
All right, I've got the key on. Let's just uh, hook this up on the steering wheel. Now, hopefully this is showing up okay. I know it's really bright outside, so this kind of looks dim, but let's uh, let's give it a shot here. So I'm gonna go into enter for the auto search and see if we can find the VIN. All right, well, there's my VIN and it says that it is a USA Ford Transit 2016. Okay, so it looks like we can do a health report, system scan, system selection, special functions, common functions, module programming, and vehicle information. Let's go ahead and start with the health report up here at the top. I don't have any active check engine lights on this vehicle that I know of, but looks like we do have a fault code though in the body control module and another fault code in the image processing module. Okay, so it looks like our tire pressure sensor says it's abnormal. Now the other one here, it says camera module. Now we have actually had some issues with that backup camera flashing. Sometimes you put it in reverse and it will just come on for a second and then flash. It says image processing module B abnormal. Now I'm not gonna clear these codes just yet. I'm gonna do a little bit of research search first, see if I can figure out what might be our problem, and then I'll come back and address that. But let's go back to our other menu. Here we can do a full system scan. So it's similar to the health report, but it's just gonna do a full scan of everything else. So here it's letting us go into each module and get the information, read the fault code, clear fault memory, read data stream, and actuation test as well. Now here's a steering angle sensor module. Let's take a look at this one and let's see if we can read the data stream on that. Steering wheel angle sensor status, direction, and steering wheel angle degree. Let's hit okay. So see right now it says correction, left, left, 78 degrees. Let's, uh, let's turn it up, oh, there you go. That's working exactly like it's supposed to. And you can change that from metric to imperial as well. Let's go back. Let's go back. But that's just how you would enter into each one of these modules and see what's going on. Let's exit out of that. Now we do want to exit. Let's go back. Now it gives us a little beep that says, don't forget to remove the VCI from the vehicle. That's pretty neat. Let's take a look at the maintenance here. Now, one of the things that I was interested in this tire size adjustment, I just wanted to take a quick look at that see if that's a possibility with this particular vehicle only because we do have much larger tires than stock on here let's go ahead and continue yeah that didn't work not every vehicle of course is going to support every single function so as you get in here it's just you know pretty easy to play around of you know seat calibration this van doesn't even have power seats so uh, there's just some of these things that are not going to be applicable to your particular vehicle. Pretty easy to use and navigate the menus here. Let's take a quick look at the OBD. I kind of skipped over that. All right, so it shows the VIN. It's showing that our check engine light status or malfunction indicator lamp status is off. DTCs in this ECU is zero. Readiness completed eight. Readiness not completed zero. So this is ready to get an inspection or smog check. Data stream supported, it says 53. So 53 different parameter IDs that we could take a look at. Let's take a look at that real quick. So there you go. That's all the different parameter IDs. You've got the, uh, the DTCs, absolute load value, absolute throttle position, the accelerator pedal position, ambient air temperature, auto trans, neutral drive, barometric pressure, load value, engine RPMs, coolant temperature, a lot of info that you can look at and do live data. Relative compression key on engine off, fully depress the accelerator pedal to the floor, wide open throttle and hold. Let's do that. Now it says crank the engine for 10 seconds or until test is completed. Let's do that. So cylinder one, four, two, five, three, and six difference of only one percent in cylinder five and it says status everything is normal mean cranking rpm 178 that's a really impressive test to do for compression relative compression of course you can also do a power balance test i'm going to do that see what happens here that is pretty neat this is just showing every single cylinder so it's showing cylinder one four two five three and six and this is just showing what our power balance is looking like we're going to put it under a little bit of a load here i'm going to put it in reverse 
Well, my camera shut down right in the middle of this test, but you can see that it's pretty flat right now after it warmed up. You can also clear that line and, and uh, reset it if you're in the middle of trying to diagnose something. Now, I just turned on the air conditioning and that kind of dropped the, uh, the engine idle. But let's see what happens when we rev it. See, it's changing our RPMs. Kind of gets a little wonky for a minute there. And if I let off the throttle, it'll probably do the same thing. But that's a pretty neat feature that's, you know, built into the vehicle, but the scanner lets us do this power balance test. So, you know, if you had an issue with one of these cylinders, whether it was a bad spark plug or a plugged injector, this would definitely point you at least in the right direction. Now we also have a misfire test to identify potential cylinder misfire events. The misfire monitor tool dynamically displays the data used by the powertrain control module. So let's hit OK. Now it says set the ignition to on, key on, engine off. Now it says start the engine and press OK. Let's hit OK. With our misfire monitor here, it's showing us the acceleration value of cylinder one, four, two, five, three, and six. Showing us our engine RPMs down here. Potential misfire count, everything is zero right now. We don't have any misfire issues in this van right now. Pretty neat that it shows you all of this. Let's hit stop. Let's go ahead and end our diagnostic session. You can pull the VCI out. It's a nice little reminder that it gives us and that just locks right into the back. That's a really nice feature. I'm pretty impressed overall with everything that this tool is able to do. There's definitely a lot of options here and a lot of features. The tire size adjustment, I tried that on the van. That didn't work. It, I guess the van doesn't have that ability or that capability. Now here we can also go back and look at those reports. And you can see here we have the two DTCs that we found. In the body control module, we had the tire pressure sensor. And also down here, we had in the camera module, a B115E. 08-0A code. So we might just have an issue with our wiring to that camera. I mean, it still does come on. Maybe there's something going on. We might just have to uh, dig into that one a little bit deeper, but pretty cool that we can always refer back to that on this scan tool. But lots of different things that you can do with this scan tool. Obviously, I'm not going to have time to go through everything with this quick little unboxing video, but we were able to successfully hook this up to the transit and find a couple DTCs that I didn't even know that I had. You know, I like this little Bluetooth connection here and I love, of course, that really strong magnet. It's, it's so strong. You can hold on to that and uh, hold the tool. Pretty neat that you can take this tool with you with that Bluetooth connector plugged into the vehicle. So for example, if you needed to walk around the vehicle, activate something and you also wanted to hear it, you know, or if it's really hot outside or really cold, you can always take this into the shop and work remotely. I don't really know what's the working distance on the Bluetooth, but I'm sure that you can have a car just right out in the driveway and come here in the shop and uh, do a little bit of diagnostics or run through some of those menus while you have the vehicle outside. You don't necessarily have to be in the vehicle. So now, of course, I just got this. And so I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time and run through and take a look at each one of these functions. But overall, I'm real happy with it. It seems to do exactly what it's supposed to do. It's a nice rugged design. You know, with newer cars and all of the modules that they have, it just seems to be more and more important to get a scan tool that's powerful, something like this. You know, it's nice to have a little code reader. At least you can kind of find out what's going on with your vehicle. But to be able to do a proper diagnosis, it's really nice to be able to have a more advanced scan tool like this. Well, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. And of course, I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up your own ThinkScan 689BT as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.